I thank everyone for taking the time to come out of their homes to the streets to unite so we can ask questions, address concerns about the proposed mine here in Kamloops. I have a few speakers lined up this morning and I would like to start off with Danielle Gintem. Hi, my name is Daniela Gintem. I am, first of all, the mother of a child who has asthma. Three weeks ago, we were in the hospital overnight because he had a very bad asthma attack. Now, watching uh, your child struggle for his next breath, and uh, I'm not using any figures of speech here, is a terrible thing. You would do anything to make it go away. I am uh, not here to say I am pro or against the mine. What I'm here to say is that my son needs clean air to breathe and all your children need clean air to breathe. What I know is as a planet we are polluted. That's a reality of having um, a cell phone, having cars, having uh, buildings to live in. Everything from now on we kind of reach the point where we have to consider wants versus needs. If we need something to be built in or near our city or near our town, that's one thing. If we want that to be built for other reasons, then we have to really reconsider. Have a, you know, we have to look at everything objectively. And first of all, how is that gonna affect the health of our children and our health? A few days ago, the World Health Organization declared air pollution and in particular particulate matter a carcinogenic agent for humans that is a major thing why because until now we knew pollution causes or aggravates respiratory diseases but now this is monumental we know air pollution causes cancer this is not right this is not our right <laughs> To induce any kind of chronic diseases in our children or in any any one of us so we have to reconsider our needs and wants and make the right decisions thank you thank you uh, the next speaker is Sean McGinnis good day everyone I would first like to thank uh, Verdell Jessup for organizing this protest hey. I think it is important for people to get out and make their voices heard. We need more protests like this one because I believe the proposed mine is a serious threat to the future of this city. To tell you a bit about myself, my family and I moved to Kamloops about six years ago from New York. We have come to love the many things this city has to offer. The friendly people, the lifestyle and the surrounding beauty. We consider ourselves to be very fortunate to have found such a wonderful place. My wife and I both teach at the university, a place which has seen a lot of growth in past years. I believe one of the big draws of TRU is the surrounding beauty. However, all of this could change if the Ajax mine is allowed to proceed. How will people perceive of this city when they drive by mountainous rock piles? One could no less ignore this than if one moved an elephant into your backyard. It has taken many years for this city to develop its current image. Why should we suddenly change course now? For 400 or so high paying mine jobs? The mine proposal raises many tough questions. Large scale open pit mining presents a myriad of risks to people and the environment. It's true that these operations have become safer over the last 20 or 30 years. To take an extreme case, I visited Butte, Montana in 2002 was once a bustling mine town at the turn of the century. It is now something of a ghost town. The central attraction in Butte is the now defunct Berkeley Pit, which was a large copper pit measuring about a mile long and a half a mile wide, located more or less in downtown Butte. The pit opened in 1955 and closed in 1982. It is a sight to behold. An enormous crater filled with sickly green colored water, apparently due to the leaching of chemicals such as arsenic, cadmium, and zinc, the water in the pit became very toxic. 
it wasn't until the late 90s that attention was brought to the fact that this water could eventually flow into the surrounding groundwater, a looming environmental disaster. The Berkeley Pit is now one of the biggest so-called Superfund sites in the U.S. The Superfund is a multi-billion dollar environmental cleanup fund. The fact that they are still struggling to control the damage from this pit more than 30 years after it closed is a testament to the dangers of this type of industrial operation. Having seen it with my own eyes was enough to convince me I would never want to live close to a large open pit mine. But now we are facing such a prospect. The question I ask myself is, why does this have to happen? What rewards could possibly justify building a large open pit mine with its inherent risks right next to a large urban population? How can one justify permanently disfiguring the face of this beautiful city for the sake of 400 or so jobs? Absolutely. Why should all of us bear the risk to our health and the future of a city so that some may benefit? As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't add up. It is simply a bad idea. What will KGHM do in the event of an accident or unforeseen circumstances? What happens if our groundwater becomes contaminated and toxic chemicals flow into our creeks and rivers? What happens if dust and toxic airborne particles become a problem? We have a completely exposed large population of people lying in the watershed and airshed of this mine. Any problems, big or small, have the potential to do significant harm. What will the mine do in the event of a catastrophe? It is not good enough to just say it will never happen. If building codes prevent us from constructing buildings which would be hazardous in the event of a fire, why should we allow a mine to be built which could result in significant damage to our health in the event of an accident? Why should the people in the city place their trust in a company which for the past two and a half years has refused to answer the tough questions? Why should we believe in a company which has consistently stonewalled on the subject of actual studies and tests returning to the Ajax mine? It appears that KGHM's new strategy is to wage a PR offensive in hope that it will soften up the resistance to the mine. But judging by the crowd here today, this does not seem to be working. No. Yeah. And the reason that this strategy will not work is that they are peddling a lousy idea. And the people are waking up to the fact. To the politicians who think that the Ajax mine might be a good thing for Kamloops, I ask you this, if this mine were to be built on the outskirts of Vancouver or Victoria or even Kelowna, would you be a supporter? Would you be waiting for the assessment office to deliver its verdict? I doubt it. So why should the city of Kamloops be treated any differently? <laughs> to the folks who point to Sudbury, Timmins, Flin Flon, or wherever as model mining towns, I prefer to live in Kamloops. <laughs> yes, this city has mines nearby, but we are not a mining town. To the people that feel this mine is inevitable and unstoppable, I say to you, yes, we are up against a large company with a lot of money and influence, but we have one thing good working for us, common sense. Thank you. Thank you, John. The next speaker is Jill Calder of the Kamloops Physicians for the Clean Environment. Thank you, John. I'm Dr. Jill Calder, and I'm really surprised to be standing up. Sorry. Kiss the microphone. Kiss the microphone? <laughs> okay. My name's Dr. Jill Calder. I'm a rehab doctor here in Kamloops, and I've been here since 1991. Hi, nice. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. 
I've been living here since 1991, practicing medicine here, raising three children here. I never thought I'd be standing up talking to you today here in Kamloops. Thanks for doing so. I am doing this because we formed a group called Kamloops Physicians for a Healthy Environment. Check us out on the web. We're kphe.ca. And we really knew very little about the mind. And we formed because people kept saying, what do the doctors think? And we didn't really think we were doing our jobs. And we did not know that our medical health officer was maybe having trouble doing his job. We became interested in the process. We formed in March. We developed a learning program for ourselves first because we didn't know enough. And now we know a lot more, enough to scare us and to be here today. Yeah. Our mandate is not to demonstrate, but to educate. We feel that if people know the facts and read the literature that we have read, they will be convinced to be cautious and concerned about this unprecedented mine project so close to an urban population. Absolutely. There have been no others in North America this close and this large. What we have learned is that we want to convey that we're not against all mining, but this particular mine in this particular location is a bad idea. As any good real estate agent knows, location, location, location. <laughs> location as in too close. I was told it was 10 kilometers away, so my immediate reaction was, well, 10 kilometers is a pretty good buffer. Isn't Highland Valley about 14 from Logan Lake? I, I don't think I'll be too concerned yet. And then I found out that that's the 10 mile jaunt around the turn and come bring you back towards Kamloops. And as the crow flies, or as the dust particles will surely fly, it's only 1,200 meters to the nearest edge of property, uh, elementary school, old age retirement homes, and I'm very concerned that the dust particles don't know to stay put. It's also unprecedented in location for its height. You don't set up a mine on a launching pad where you have meteorologic conditions that will whip up your tailings pile and take those dust particulates down to a waiting population below in a valley. Sorry, and yeah. you don't have a valley so nicely located with winter inversions and catabatic winds bringing those particles down, not just to Upper Aberdeen and Upper Sahali, but through the whole valley. Just take a look at the fog and smog that we have now, and that's where these particles will go. Yeah. You are not safe in Valley View. You're not safe in Barnhartville. You're not safe in Westside. You're actually not even safe up in Vail Mine. The, the fact that it's not just an Aberdeen real estate issue should be coming through loud and clear with the science. The other issue I was confronted with was someone said, well, the particles that you're worried about, Jill, are heavy. They're heavy metal, so they'll just stay in the pit. <laughs> I did go through chemistry enough to remember that heavy metals are heavy on the periodic chart, but they do hitch a ride with all that particulate matter and will end up in places. The larger ones end up in our nose, in our throats, make us have a constant cold. The smaller ones, ultra fine and fine, end up much deeper in our lungs and will cause asthma, COPD, and an inflammatory response for the whole body. The particulates, once they do their number on the bloodstream, will go to the heart, causing heart disease, to the brain, causing strokes. Cancer of any organ, liver and lung are the most important ones, and leukemias, lymphomas, and heart organs. So I don't really like these particles very much. <laughs> Finally, last week, the World Health Organization proved, by review of good articles, over a thousand of them, that air pollution causes cancer. It's in the number two position. Does anybody know what's number one for causing cancer? Smoking. I can choose to not smoke and I can get help to stop smoking, but I cannot choose not to breathe. The particles have 
a, an effect on our bodies that are proportional. So it's called a linear relationship. The more pollution, the more effect. And we will have for every one microgram per meter cubed, that's a measurement of how many particles are in a millimeter of air, for every one increase, there will be 1.4% increase in mortality. If you do the math for Kamloops, for every one microgram increase of the level of particulate matter in our air, there will be a death of 10 to 11 more people per year based on pollution-related diseases. That will be, and there's no way they can say zero harm because we are already at 8 or 9 or 10 for our particulate, which is above the BC goal of 8. In fact, the BC goal is six. They've already waived that. They're letting the mind plan for eight. So right now, we're at the upper limits of what we consider dirty air. The good news is, is if we clean up our air, every microgram per millimeter cubed that we go down, we actually reduce ourselves by 1.4% deaths per year. To me, that's an investment. Now, the doctors are a little bit tentative. We do our day jobs. We are not the medical health officers that are supposed to be monitoring and scrutinizing this project. When we did a review and found out that they were having trouble doing that due to manpower, due to the amount of extra special expertise required for this unprecedented project, we offered our help to advocate for better processes in place. <laughs> What we want are proper baseline studies so that when and if we have any impact to our environment, we at least know where we started from. We don't have that right now. We want an independent health assessment that is done in a robust fashion by independent people comprehensively and are very knowledgeable and skilled to do it properly. And we want to have ongoing scrutiny afterwards so that we can shut this down if they don't keep to targets. We have some incredible things happening in the U.S. where for, since 1993, Utah has been unable to meet any of their targets. Once you let them build, you can't shut them down. We are doctors, we're just doctors. We're not specialists in this, but we are advocating, learning. Please look for us on the webpage, kphe.ca. It's a learning tool written in plain language for everyone. We are also reviewing articles, and so far we have reviewed over 500 articles that are available to you off the website. We also are on Facebook, and we've learned how to tweet. So we're trying to keep up. Thanks for today. Thank you, Dr. Robert. The next speaker is Krista Hofgroff. I'm a geologist and I'm a parent. I've written dozens of reports and maps, co wrote the guide to geology for Kamloops. I have also spoken and helped create presentations about how to increase the social license for mining. And what I have to say today, and especially to the people across the street, is that this mine has to be stopped in order to protect the mining industry in BC and its reputation. protect wildlife in parks, but not a city of 14,000 children, is a shameful, and it blackens the entire industry. Do a search of mine tailings and children's health, and what you'll see is government publications in Australia, New Zealand, and Nova Scotia. Communities where gold and copper mines interface with communities, cautioning parents against things like eating vegetables and fruit from their backyard and trying to keep the dust out of their home. What kind of legacy will this mine leave? You may ask, well, won't the Environmental Assessment Office protect us? No. 
and the answer is it wants to, but it is naive to think that it can without your help. Kevin Kruger, thanks. Kevin Kruger, our min former minister of mines, laid it out really plainly that for a project to proceed, it needs social license. And the question is, does it have yours? And you have to think when you're trying to decide whether to show up for something like this, it's not speaking up and not showing up and sharing your concerns is like giving Ajax social license. This is the first of many, many gatherings that we're going to have to show up for. Next time, please bring another friend. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Crystal. The next speaker is Donovan Caver. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see so many smiling faces out here. It's a great turnout. I'm joined here today by Councillor Tina Lang. And one of the good news about City Council is those of us who have made up our mind about this project are 100% opposed. So you have... Yeah. Yeah. So much of what I wanted to say has already been said, so I'll, I'll keep it quite brief. In, in my view, it's location, location, location. I'm, I'm not opposed to mining in BC. It is a very important part of our economy. But this company, if they are going ahead with a project in the current location, is not a responsible corporation. No responsible corporation would ever even propose to do what they are hoping to do. They've poured an unprecedented amount of money into sponsorships. They are trying to buy social license, not earn social license. Hello, everybody. It's awfully great of you all to show up. I've had a number of people say to me over the last couple of days, OMG, Tina, why would a city councilor ever go to a public demonstration? And my answer is, OMG, why would I not be here? I have lived in Camelot since 1956. Do the math, I'll be 62. And I have never felt this level of fear in my community on any topic in those 57 years. I've been a city councilor for eight years, and this is definitely the biggest issue that we have faced in your community. So of course I'm here because I need to listen. I want to know more. I want to talk to people. There are the people in this community that fear that the negative aspects of this mine are really going to hurt us. So if people have that fear in Kamloops, do you really believe that people who are possibly considering moving here, maybe to start a business, to go to school, to retire, to open a medical practice, do you not think that possibly they would also have those fears and not move here? Not visit here? Not send their students to school here? Not invest here? I don't need to be a scientist. I don't need to wait for the results of an environmental assessment to know that perception is everything. And the perception in this community is that an open pit mine in the city is going to adversely affect the fabulous image that we have and enjoy today. That image of healthy community. A community that showed up here today, particularly those who are business owners. It is really tough when you own a business to take a public stand because it means dollars. You're so afraid to drive away your customers. So to the business owners that are here, you showed great strength. Thank you very much.
Thank you everyone for coming out today. I organized the rally because I'm very concerned about living in a city with a proposed mine on the table. I grew up 45 minutes outside of Sudbury, Ontario. I lived also in a community that had a pulp mill. My mother died of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, which can be caused by environmental factors. I'm here because I love the city I live in, the friends I have. We shouldn't have to sit around and discuss where we're going to move if this goes through. I do not want to move and I want to breathe clean air. talents in the sense that I'm constantly moving around to different jobs. I'm a trauma counselor. I do body work. And I also cook in remote camps. A year ago, I managed a kitchen on the coast for an IPP project. I know what it is like to live away from home and work and earn good dollars. But I like to come home to a clean home and environment. There are other ways that we can create good paying jobs here in Kamloops. Let's sit down and talk. Thank you for those across the street that are coming out. I would love to sit and have a dialogue. We need to learn how to speak each other's languages so we can understand what's at risk here. What each party side wants. It's really important that we can sit down as individuals without banter and bashing. I would like to invite everyone to peacefully walk along the sidewalk all the way down to 6th, down 6th, and back along Victoria to 2nd. Thank you very much for coming out. I'm going to also start um, a Facebook platform that allows anyone to come and post information, research that you find. So there's multiple parties all doing research. What I don't want people doing is sitting and being willfully blind. Thank you for coming out. Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax! I don't know how many of you folks out there have been on one of my tours. You can put your hand up if you wanted. But there's a few of you. There's a lot of you that have not. I have a tour going tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock up at Inks Lake. That tour takes about three and a half to four hours. When people stick around for four hours, you know they want to learn something. And they won't stay unless they are learning something. Okay? One o'clock. I want to thank some additional people. Purdell for getting this going. It's a fantastic turnout. And just great. Let's hear for her. I also want to thank Richard Boyce for coming out the way he did against this project. That's been terrific. Dr. Bars from Salmon Arms for finally saying what had to be said as far as the medical end of it is concerned. This is a huge issue. I want to thank the guys across the street for coming to our rally. Right? What I want to know is I want, to, I want everybody on this side of the street to be quiet for a second. And I want you guys to let us know how bad this thing is. Make as much noise as you can, guys. You will be drowned out. You don't have a message that will get across. Let's hear from the rest of you. Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax! Stop, stop by Todd Stone's office at 446 Victoria and let him know exactly how we feel as well. Thanks, guys. Let's go. Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax! Stop Ajax!